Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. Hey, I know we took a surprise week off. I'm sorry, but I needed some extra time. I was kind of busy at work. I got a million excuses. I hit my foot. (laughs) The bathtub was too cold. I had to send letters to my parents. I had to pay my bills. I have a million excuses. This one's on me, though. I'll just say up front. Sorry about missing a surprise week, uh, but we're back and we're back with a Yakuza episode of Miami Vice. And this means Castillo with the ninja. No Speedo, though. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of disappointed. There was no Speedo and no long haired Castillo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, this episode is titled is season four, episode nine, titled Rising Sun of Death. It originally premiered on December 4th, 1987. It is written by Peter Lance, who also has three more episodes coming. He is also a story editor for 10 episodes on this season, too. Something about season four, like lots of people were on season four, did a lot of work on season four, but none of them are listed for doing stuff in season five. Well, that should tell you right there. (laughs) (laughs) They were so successful, they never had to appear again. (laughs) <laughs> we don't need you anymore. You've done enough for the show. <laughs> it is directed by Leon Echasso. That name sounds very familiar because he's also done some of our favorite episodes, as in favorite awkward episodes in Little Miss Dangerous, Kill Shot, Better Living Through Chemistry, and he's still got one more to go. Hey, Kill Shot's not awkward. That one's good. Except for the acting. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> except for hiring real high ally players to be in well, it. Well, not any more awkward than real basketball players to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, there's actually a fair amount of music in here and a fair amount of Jan Hammer music uh, and with some bands that we've seen before. So what do you got for us this week? OK, so we're going through a, we're going to run through some of the music pretty quick because we get. Flesh for Fantasy from Billy Idol, who we have already seen in Down for Count, Down for the Count Part 2. And he's going to be back again for Honor Among Thieves. We've already talked about him. I told you that he was almost T-1000. Told you about him being in The Wedding Singer. I don't know what more you want me to tell tell you about (laughs) Billy Idol. So we'll see if I figure anything out by Honor Among Thieves. We also have C. Senor the Hairy Grill. (laughs) <laughs> it's one of my favorite song names ever. Yes. In case you missed that, that was C si, Senor the Hairy Grill. A yellow. <laughs> they also also did the song Moon and Ice. Sadly, this is the last appearance of Yellow in our music. You might remember them from the episodes Kill Shot. Contempt of Court, a Swiss electronica and techno pop band. They consisted of Dieter Moyer. Boris Blank and Carlos Perón. Carlos Perón being the original member, him and Boris Blank founded Transonic Records in Zurich when they founded the group Yellow. They would bring in Dieter Moyer uh, to uh, take over, to basically head up vocals. And Perone would actually leave shortly after that. We've talked about him a little bit, and so I have always enjoyed the the their name of their band, Yellow. I love the name C si, Senor the Hairy Girl. <laughs> so we bid you adieu. <laughs> so let's get to what you guys really want to hear about. Last night I dreamt that someone loved me by the Smiths. Smiths are an English band who were active from 1982 to 1987. They're made up of Stephen Patrick Morrissey, Johnny Marr, Andy Rourke, and Mike Joyce. In 1982, Johnny Marr basically showed up on Morrissey's doorstep with his friend Steve Pomfret. They showed up on his doorstep to see if he wanted to start a band together. They really didn't really know each other, but he was... Marr was impressed by Morrissey's... Morrissey had written a book on the band The New York Dolls, Mm -hmm. and he was a fan. And so he went to his house and asked him, hey, you want to start a band? Morrissey, uh, Stephen, as we'll talk... uh, I think it should be... We're getting to know him. We can call him (laughs) Stephen. So Marr and Stephen basically spent the first few years of the band releasing demos and singles. They did a couple shows, but mostly were just basically still trying to get the rest of the band worked out as Steve Steve Pomfret would leave and they would have a few other 
people tried out as drummers and bassists before settling on a Rourke and Joyce. By 83, they determined on the name The Smiths. They said that they chose the name because it was the most, basically the most ordinary name they could think of. <laughs> and by 1983, Morrissey had forbidden anyone to call him Stephen, just going by Morrissey. <laughs> this, sounds, this, this all sounds based on how I know Morrissey now. That's exactly and how he exactly is. Exactly yeah. how he is. Yeah. <laughs> so in 1984, their debut album, The Smiths, reached number two on U- UK album charts, and that really was the beginning of the popularity. They were met with some controversy off of the first record, with some no. tabloids claiming that songs suggested pedophilia. <laughs> no, wait primarily a minute. these songs are you Reel around the fountain and the hand that rocks the cradle. <laughs> Are you suggesting that Morrissey and the Smiths and controversy? <laughs> There's no way I saw that coming. Yeah, Morrissey <laughs> being who he is and a vegetarian, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys can call him Stephen too. We, 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 it's okay. No, I don't Stephen. think so. He's Morrissey. He's not Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in 1985, Meat is Murder came out. It was more a more strident and political album, obviously, with uh, the main song, It Is Murder, being a very pro-vegetarian <laughs> title track. Yep. <laughs> uh, Steven, Steven would go on to forbid the band from being photographed eating meat. <laughs> so Steven said, no more eating meat, uh, at least while cameras are present. <laughs> yeah, I don't care what you do in your house. Just don't eat it in public. So late 85, 86, the release The Queen is Dead came out. They were constantly touring and it was starting to take a toll. Uh, Mar had talked in interviews about how he they were touring so much and he was so burnt out that he was drinking excessively. They also had a legal dis- with their record label at the time, which released release of the uh, album from late 85 to June 86 and all kinds of just shenanigans within the band. Rourke would actually be fired via post-it <laughs> um, for, uh, apparently for his heroin use. Well, I mean, that is a serious but only for about two weeks, <laughs> but only for about two weeks after two weeks he would rejoin the band and his replacement would be moved to guitars and eventually leave the band. Obviously, Steven still, still Claims that that never happened, but Rourke <laughs> does. So, well, then it's a lie. Then, <laughs> <laughs> if Morrissey said it didn't happen, then it didn't happen. Stephen, his name no, is Stephen. Morrissey. <laughs> Stephen Patrick. <laughs> so by 1987, um, tensions had grown a lot. Uh, Morrissey had taken a sabbatical from the band, which prompted articles about a possible split up. It's just created made tensions worse. So by the time their album Strange Ways Here We Come was released in 87, the band had already split up. The claim was is that Steven didn't like that Marr was working with other musicians, while Marr disliked Steven's inflexibility musically. <laughs> so, um, Steven, Steven clearly being jealous of Marr wanting to expand musically and work with other people. <laughs> Steven clearly so, being the talent. <laughs> 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 well, that that's arguable, because post-Smiths, once the Smiths broke up, Steven will go on to have a successful solo career, so I'll give you that. Under the name Morrissey, but we know him as Steven here. <laughs> the rest of the world knows him as Morrissey, you know. <laughs> but while he was doing his solo career, Mar wasn't exactly just stagnant, successful himself. He would release three albums from 89 to 93 in the super group Electronic. He was also a member of the band The The <laughs> during that same period of time. Uh, and he was also working as a session musician. And he did work. He worked and recorded with bands like The Pretenders, Beck, The Talking Heads, and a number of others he also joined the modest mouse from 2006 to 2007 mm. toured extensively with them so and then after all of that most recently he's been releasing his own solo stuff and finding some success i don't know steve might not be the most successful post more um, <laughs> <I think he is. laughs> 
Well, you know, he still sells on concerts, so I guess, <laughs> you know, so by himself, more... not with another band or <laughs> uh, with Modest Mouse, but all alone. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, Modest Mouse is a big, massive band. I mean, they could even be bigger than... Okay, let's wrap this up. <laughs> yeah, right. Um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Rourke and Joyce were they were they were in numerous other bands, but um, none saw uh, anywhere close to the success the Smiths were did. But they would sue Morrissey and Marr in 1989 because apparently the money was not split up very fairly. Mm-hmm. You see, the problem with joining a band and being in the band is that eventually someone has to talk money. And when no one talks money, well, what happens is after you leave the band, you realize that Johnny Marr and Morrissey were each getting 40% of the revenue, <laughs> total yeah, the 80% guys, yeah. of the band's revenue. <laughs> yep. Wow. And Rourke and Joyce were each only getting 10% of, <laughs> of what the band made. They would sue and Rourke would, because of financial issues, would settle almost immediately he would walk away with eighty three thousand pounds which is i mean that, that's what like a thousand dollars in u.s money <laughs> 420 dollars <laughs> so and then he would go on to collect just 10 percent of future revenue so he would stay at the 10 percent and walk away for just eighty thousand dollars joyce who was doing a little bit better who was also doing some session work doing a little bit better financially continue to sue the uh the case would go on for years but he would eventually win. He would be awarded one million pounds and twenty-five percent of future revenue. No. So and <laughs> because Stephen would would forget to make some payments, he would actually end up receiving a million and a half pounds. Mm. Um, getting some late fees out of old Morrissey there. <laughs> so but all in all, it wouldn't settle until 1998. That's that's nine years, folks. Wow. Nine years illegal. Numerous times, people have speculated. People have tried to pay them to reunion. There was even one claim that someone tried to give them fifty million dollars to do like four shows. Every time they have turned it down, and every time they have said, or specifically, uh, Stephen and Mar have said. That it's not about the money. Because obviously for Rourke and Joyce, it would be very much yeah, about exactly. the money. Because they have money. <laughs> they would be more than happy to reunite. But yeah, <laughs> Morrissey and Marr would say no every time. They would say it wasn't about the money. Morrissey even once saying in an interview that he would rather eat his own testicles than <laughs> reform the Smiths. And that saying that. something for a vegetarian. Exactly. <laughs> so, don't expect any new Smith music soon. I, I think they worked out some to release some compilations, but that was mostly because I think Roy, Rourke and Joyce reached out and was like, "Come on, guys, we need the cash. Please, we need the money." <laughs> so. There you have it, the Smiths, starring Johnny and Stephen. <laughs> I, I have I have two points here that I'll make on this final music wrap up. One, Melissa, this is your heyday. This is when the Smiths, The Cure, yes. and Depeche Mode are all like at their biggest. Yep, exactly. Um, and I'm sure there's several times where you can see like they were touring either at the, together or in the same areas at the yeah. same time. Especially because they're all from kind of the same part of England, mm -hmm. too. So this is like your heyday. Two, John, I'm not protecting you. Morrissey will come for your ass. <laughs> yeah, actually, he will. <laughs> he will. You better hope. Hey, if I, didn't get sued, <laughs> if, if I didn't get sued by that guy who basically sued everyone that ever wrote anything about him, he even sued that critic. Like, if he hasn't come after me, I'm not scared of you, Stephen Patrick. <laughs> Well, I just have one point to make. While you were while you were finishing up, I was looking up their net worth. So for what it's worth, Morrissey's worth fifty million dollars. And the other guy, yeah, he's worth two point five million. So I think maybe hey, if you're talking hey. money, who's more successful? Fifty million is a I, lot more millions than two point five. I am still I am still team Johnny Marr over here. Marr yeah, was well, right. <laughs> all I know, John, is that Morrissey will drag your ass on Twitter. Yeah, he will. He does it all the time. I follow him. Well, let's I'm go find Rourke. <laughs> to Gork, Gork would agree with me. 
Well, let's go give our final thoughts on this episode of Miami Vice. A, a nice comeback, I'll say, from last week. So <laughs> let's go yeah. give our final thoughts. Well, that's going to do it for this episode, but we are going to introduce a new section here. Some transfer music that goes <laughs> here. Some transformers. <laughs> Let's check the mailbag. We got an email to read. And the reason why I picked this one out is because he makes a great point. This email is from Robert. He says, hey, guys, I'm Robert. Big Miami Vice fan. Lo- lo- love the podcast. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he says, I just finished watching the series. I won't spoil the series finale for you because I know you're watching it blind, but have some tissues handy, Melissa. Yes. <laughs> I already know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you guys have talked about the, the series to do after Vice. I would recommend not straying far from Vice Family and doing Crime Story. I'm one is, for that. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about this. Mm. We've talked about Crime Story. He says, I just watched a two-hour pilot and it's like watching Vice on a different level. You're waiting for Crockett and Tubbs to show up and of course they never do. But in true Michael Mann fashion, just as Vice, there's a huge shootout towards the end with no bystanders getting hit. <laughs> <laughs> the show is filled with Vice regulars, even Izzy. I know. I didn't know that. That's exciting. <laughs> mm-hmm. I will say, at least after watching the pilot, the show seems quite a bit darker than Vice and it has almost no humor. A lot like season three of Vice, except you have to watch the episodes in order, no jumping around. Just my two cents, I would expect Vice podcast to continue if the reboot starts this year or whenever. And that's from Robert, as I mentioned. And absolutely, if Vice does a reboot, we're back. Oh, yeah, for we sure. We are on board oh, yeah. for the Vice reboot. You, you can't see me from watching it. so. <laughs> and we had a nice exchange uh-huh. back, back and forth. Robert and I, we talked a little bit more about what the potential storyline is for the new Vice. We talked about... Crime story a little bit. One of the other shows that we mentioned that we might want to do is 21 Jump Street because it fits that cop and music kind of thing together. But, John, I know you're you're not on the opposite side of the fence on 21 Jump Street. I am. Is that because uh, like, you're not allowed I, I, in school zones? <laughs> 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 you try and pretend to be a high school student once, and you know... <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the young random ever it works in the movies why couldn't i go undercover richard i know Grico. i'm not really a cop <laughs> get the fuck out of here what are you doing here richard richard Grico? you're like 50 get out of here <laughs> <laughs> hey it only worked when johnny did it okay <laughs> so at, in my exchange with robert it came up with i think how we're going to do this and and we're going to talk more about this, but I believe this summer what we're going to do is, is we're going to do some pilots. We're going to give the vice treatment to a series of shows like pilots for those shows. We'll release them in a separate feed, may, probably on our Patreon. Uh, maybe on YouTube is where we'll release them. They won't be put into the regular vice RSS feed or the, the go with the heat feed. We'll do it as something separate, but then we'll be able to do the vice treatment on them. We'll get our feet wet. We'll get some feedback from the listeners to see which ones that they prefer Crime Story is pr- pretty strong. Not only is it Michael Mann and has crossover with Miami Dennis Vice. Dennis Farina. Dennis Farina. But it's mm-hmm. also only two seasons off, so we can actually get through that pretty quickly. I mm-hmm. love that show, so I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> to check out the music. So, yeah, look for this summer. In the next couple months, we'll start to solidify our plans around that. We'll do a few pilots and do the go with the heat treatment on them, release them out, and then get some feedback on them. We'll see where we want to go when we get to the end of this year. So thank you, Robert, for emailing. I really appreciate you sending feedback. And the nice exchange that we had going back and forth, I thought that went really well. And I really appreciate hearing from you. So thanks for emailing. We would love to hear your feedback too. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com, just like Robert did. Get us on Twitter, twitter.com slash go with the heat, facebook.com slash go with the heat. You know where we're at. You know how to get a hold go of us. Go with the heat. <laughs> <laughs> Even on Instagram, go with the heat. You want to see some choice pictures of Tubbs and his carrot juice <laughs> <laughs> from like a hurricane? Check out that Instagram, go with the heat. Be sure to check out the website, go with the heat.com. You can see all the ways to subscribe. Other ways you want to give us feedback. You can find additional RSS feeds, including the This Week in Vice only. You can find the music segment only. Be sure to ch- check out that website. That's going to do it for us And this by the week. way, Smiths fans, I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. Don't <laughs> at me. Please don't you send me be, letters. You should be apologizing to Morrissey. His ears were twitching right now. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sorry, guys. I was just playing. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, pals. Bye.